based on what you saw last season, of course, being yanked and pulled back and forth on the sideline into the game and back and forth, whether that gave you enough of a look of uh, his skills, abilities, and potential leadership skills to have confidence in Nikosi Perry this year. You know, the thing about it is, if you're looking only at last season, you're missing the picture. And again, I've been watching Nikosi Perry since he was a high school recruit, since we started recruiting him his junior year of high school. Nikosi Perry has all the physical tools in the world. There's all kinds of potential there. On You know, I keep referencing his arm is elite. It's at 80 on the baseball 2080 scale. It doesn't get better than that. You saw these throws. I throw up the seam to Jeff Thomas against Florida State, which was one play before that dime that he dropped to Brevin Jordan for the game winner. That throw up the seam, not many people even have the gumption to attempt, let alone throw it perfectly. And yes, Jeff Thomas had to jump to get it because he was in between three players, but there's dudes who don't even think about dreaming about making, even attempting that throw. So there is ability there, but this is year three for him. Potential has to turn into production now. And I am confident that I have I'm confident that Nikosi Perry has the potential to perform to the level that we saw in high school, where he not only broke but shattered Dante Culpepper's records at Ocala Vanguard, records that had stood for 20 years and were not even close to being approached, records in Ocala or the in the county that had not been approached in years since John Brantley was a record-setting quarterback in that area. I don't know if Nikosi Perry threw for as many touchdowns as Brantley, who I think at one time held the national record, but it was close. So, yeah, I think that he has the talent. But obviously, subpar coaching and the offensive scheme did him no favors. And we talked about this before. I did, at least. You could tell. You could see that Nikosi Perry wanted to do things that he naturally did. Like, I'm going to run this way. I'm going to look this way. I'm going to improvise during this play in the way that I did in high school, and again, with the production that he had in high school, that's a thing that he could do well. But Mark Rick said, no, there's none of that. All that running, cut it out. That improvising, cut it out. You have to do. You have to play by the numbers, paint by the numbers inside the lines of what I'm giving you. And you could see Nikosi Perry on the field fighting his natural instinct to do what Coach said. And I don't think that Mark Rick should have given him free reign but I think that there were no favors done in Nikosi Perry's estimation or in, in, his, in his pursuit for greatness. This now comes down to Dan Enos and his ability to coach and run, call and run an offense. I'm very strongly of the opinion, and I think that everybody is, that Dan Enos is a better quarterback coach than John Richt who had no experience for the position and was hired at the age of the ripe age of 25 after a college career in which he had nominal statistics, if any, based upon his last name and the fact that he's his father's son and knew something about quarterbacks because obviously his father coached quarterbacks and, you know, had K, or Casey Weldon as runner-up to the Heisman Trophy, uh, Charlie Ward as the Heisman Trophy winner when he was quarterback coach up at Florida State years previous, but John Rick himself was not good. And when you have a guy like Perry, who's talented, but raw, you've got to develop him. And for me, I was a teacher for 15 years. That probably is over at this point. But when I was a first year teacher, I remember talking to my mentors about the fact that when I had a plan or I wrote a lesson plan or I wanted to do something right in the classroom, teach the kids to move them forward, which is the same thing as coaching, where you're developing a skill, right? I had one path to go down. And if you didn't get what I said in that way, I had no alternative ready for you. And it was told to me from a mentor of mine, I didn't even have a bag of tricks, not even tricks in the bag, but a bag to put the tricks in. You know what I mean? And that was John Richt, I think. I don't think that he had, I think he would try things one way and if you didn't get it, uh, I don't even have any fallback reference. I can't. I cannot give it to you another way. I can't teach you in a different kind of manner because I don't have that kind of experience. Dan Linos, however, has a wealth of experience. So maybe if he's trying to teach it the one way, coach it the one way if you want to take it that way, and that's not necessarily hitting home, 
cool. I remember it at Central Michigan. I remember it at Arkansas. I remember it. Da -da 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 -da. I did something this other way, or I talked to this coach at this convention, or I read this, or I did that because he's been coaching as long as John Rick has been alive. So now he has other available avenues to communicate with his players. So it's my sincere hope and goal that that is not only done with Nicosi Perry, but Jared Williams and Tate Martell. Now, Manny Diaz spoke about the quarterback position specifically when asked yesterday after a community service event where he said, we strip the guys down, metaphorically speaking, on their technique and their foundation and their fundamentals. And we gave everybody equal, uh, equal shot with the ones, with the coaching, with the rotation and practice, all that stuff. So you're now starting, going into the summer, you're starting the race at the same point, you know, at that starting line. Now, whoever goes out and wins it, wins it. If you're that Matthew Bowling kid from um, Houston, that track star, cool. If you're Sha'Carri Richardson, who just left LSU to be um, a professional track star because she's winning every race by a whole bunch, but they're starting at the same point, cool. You know, or, and if you fall behind, that's not necessarily what we want, but that's okay because somebody else went and took it. So I'm fine. I, again, I think that Nicosi Perry has a great wealth of talent. So, too, do Jaron Williams and Tate Martell. So I'm not as down on any of them as other people because I've seen the potential in all of them. I watch all the high school films. You can go back and look at those things. Even from when they were playing in college, there are things to like. There's also things not to like that need to get improved, but that's the nature of sports. So in all these cases, it really comes down to Dan Enos and the player themselves how are they working right now, today, June 12th? What are they doing in the weight room? What are they doing on the practice field? What are they, hey, 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 wide receiver group, why don't we go run on air? Why don't we go do this? Why don't we work on this playbook or this thing from the playbook? All of that that's going on now, that's going to end up telling us who, or showing us who's going to win because the, <clears throat> the work that you do in private is shown in public. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the time that people are looking at you that you really develop, you know, it's the time away from everybody. And that's what's going on right now. So getting back to the point of the original question, have I seen enough from Nikosi Perry to be excited for his potential? Absolutely. Same thing with Jaron, same thing with Tate. I personally am a fan of Nikosi, but I'm more a fan of this you, my alma mater, and whichever player goes out there and wins that job. And if it's Nikosi, awesome. And y'all know that I'll be leading the charge, I'll be driving the train, I'll be cheering as hard as anybody. But if it's not Nikosi, I'm still going to be up front pulling for that quarterback because all these guys actually have Miami caliber talent, all these guys actually have Miami caliber ability, and they should be here, unlike previous year's quarterbacks. And I think that's a big difference. We have a course at uh, my place of employment. It's called Train the Trainer. So the idea is that you equip the trainer with the ability to adjust the training method to the particular trainee, uh, their mode of learning, their style, their cognitive abilities. You take cues. You also take feedback from them because some of it they know and they're aware of others portions of their ability to learn that they don't recognize the trainee themselves, but you should be able to pick up on that from trying to uh, convey information to them. And you you mold your your training style to, to the trainee. Uh, another thing that comes to mind when you uh, outline all that, Cam, is your guy Justin Tatavio joins us on a weekly basis to talk at X's and O's. And one of the main themes that he brings across on a regular basis and is an obvious aspect of offensive football currently versus when Mark Richt started to coach it and coach it successfully is back in the day, you ran a play. You called a play based on whatever your philosophy or strengths of your unit and the study that you did on the defense for that particular week. Well, there has to be at this point, uh, there's required less study of the defense and it's more about arming and equipping your, your, um, your offense, both the players and the scheme that you run with the ability to go out there, snap the ball, read the defense while the play's going on and run, pass, pitch, do whatever, according to what you see. So there's flexibility there. So, 
you're rarely caught off guard because you're basically instead of old school where you call a play and you run it regardless of what you see, unless you've got a really a well-developed quarterback who can, who can uh, audible out of that. And then you, you counter off of that on individual plays later in the game. Now you basically, you counter off of the defense in play. And so you have a team that's able to, and an offense that's able to read the defense in motion and adapt to it. And it doesn't appear as though Mark Richt was able to institute an offense with that type of flexibility. No. And it was about the same as when Al Golden was here, except for less explosive. Um, Miami, for the better part of a decade, has broken the huddle, lined up, and ran the play. No motion, no shifting, no alteration. Just we're going to get to our spot. We're going to look, even look to the sideline, and stay in our same alignment, but still run that play. So, yeah, everything that you said and everything that Justin has said on the point, is it rings true. Um, and, yeah, I think that, you know, with Dan Enos doing and, and running an offense, designing an offense that is – more varied and dynamic in that kind of a way is going to be a big help. And Enos is building in things for the quarterbacks that are friendly. You know, you're going to have a shallow crossing route on every play almost. You're going to have a check down play side, not to the, you know, I'm looking this way and then all of a sudden my check down is back over here. Okay, I got to do that. You know, but like built in ergonomically, if you will, to the play, there are going to be reads and throws and just safety valves that are easy and those are your you know completion percentage builders your confidence builders things like that and i think that having those things are going to be a little bit easier or make life a little easier for the quarterbacks as well now again high level competitive football is going to be challenging i'm not going to say it's going to be a cakewalk i mean even for the 2001 hurricanes the best college football team of all time there were games that were close you know, so there's that. But I think that Danny Enos is going to have Miami in a better place offensively, uh, at least schematically. And if that helps the quarterback position play better, regardless of who plays, I don't care who plays, but the nameless, faceless person or people who play quarterback this year have to be better than last year. Last year, Miami got the worst quarterback play in Division One, bar none, full stop. And obviously, it was the worst of Power 5, but the worst in D1. And I mean, you're thinking of terrible teams. You're thinking of winless teams, one with two lost teams, Miami's quarterback play exclusively was worse than those. So if you take Miami's quarterback play from being in the 125 to 128 range collectively into the 60s, that's average, you know, that's league average. But that's such a massive change positively that, you know, if you're thinking, hey, Miami could have won X amount of games if they only scored 17 or 20 points last year with the worst quarterbacks around, if you have average, I mean, just middle of the road, B flat basic, I mean, who's a 6-6 a six and six team in America? Uh, Western Kentucky, um, I mean, you know, like, I mean, you know, something like that, somebody who you're like, they're not great. But yeah, if, if Miami's quarterbacks are to that level, then the team should be able to achieve greatness because you're not having that position stand in the way of that pursuit of greatness. And that does come down to the players developing and also the coaches developing them and Danny knows the quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator designing and implementing and calling an offense that is friendly for the quarterbacks and for everybody. And yes, of course, every, all the players making plays, the offensive linemen holding blacks, blah, 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 all that block, excuse me, all those things as well.